you're at The Coaching Inn, 3D Coaching's virtual pub, where we enjoy conversations with people who are engaged in the world of coaching. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Coaching Inn. I'm your host, Claire Pedrick, and today I'm in conversation with Katie Ackhurst. And before we meet Katie, just a reminder, if you want to get every episode as it down as it comes out, uh, do subscribe or follow. And if you like this episode, we would love you to share it with one other person. Katie Ackhurst, welcome to the Coaching Inn. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, so somebody contacted me and said you must talk to the people from Kids Matter, <laughs> which is the organisation you work for. So I sent you a message and said we must talk on the Coaching Inn. And you said yes. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just tell us a bit about your journey, Katie, and, and how coaching is connected with what you do. And then tell us a bit about Kids Matter. It would be great. Yeah, great. So uh, I first came kind of in contact with coaching, I guess, about 10 years ago, um, actually through a different charity called Resurgo, um, who are a charity that uh, primarily run a pre-employment program for young people. And coaching is the way that they do that. So. I applied to be a spear coach because uh, it's a it's called the spear program that they run. And I completely fell in love with the coaching approach, um, mainly because of the way that it like really empowers people and it equips people to find their own way through their own through challenges. Um, and it also is an amazing tool to help build confidence in people and allow them to find a way to thrive. Um, because I think for me, like I never liked the way that school approaches and that kind of telling slightly top down mm -hmm. um, and actually the kind of collaborative way that coaching allows you to be with people uh, and not kind of do too uh, is what initially really sparked my interest. And from there on, really, um, I've kind of grown and developed as a coach. So did you start Kids Matter? I did not, no. Uh, Ellie Gardner um, is one of the co-founders of Kids Matter. Mm -hmm. She's actually a clinical psychologist um, and had a real heart for what our vision is, which is to see every child in need raised in a strong family. Um, and it's she kind of combined her clinical experience and then also a real desire to meet families when they're in a community and you know the acknowledgement that so many statutory services have been cut and access to gaining kind of support for your family is very difficult specifically for the families that we're here to support which is low income low support families where perhaps having the confidence or the ability to access some of these resources isn't available for them. Mm. So that's kind of the heart of why we exist. Um, we primarily do that work through the church where we would partner with a local church uh, because they are within a community. Um, and we would train someone from that church who then runs our parenting program, which is the piece that we do. Um, so, yeah, but coaching is very much part of our DNA from how we operate internally um, and then also how we run our programs. How interesting. And the connection with you was made because somebody said, oh, look, this organisation wants ICF credential coaches and does supervision and all sorts of fancy things. So I'd love to hear more about how coaching is working with the families and the people that you work with. Mm. But also, yeah, let's start with that and then we'll go for the ICF thing afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, for us, we have this phrase like the wisdom is in the room. And that's because we believe that all of the parents who are attending the program are the ones that really have the uh, knowledge, the skills to be able to support one another. Like parenting mm -hmm. is hard. Um, and if you do that in isolation, it's even harder. So. Primarily, we're here to offer a community space. Within that, the material that the facilitator goes through is evidence informed. Um, so it's very much found they got the foundations uh, within kind of psychology. Um, but the delivery of that is discussion based. And it's about pulling out the wisdom 
from the parents in the room. So it's, we equip our facilitators with the coaching skills to be able to kind of ask that initial question. And then the idea is, is that the ball is being bounced around the room, you know, and then occasionally as a facilitator, you might catch the ball, maybe like summarize what you've heard, link you back to the material and then throw it back out. Nice. Um, and it's really about like, we are here to help parents increasing their confidence and their competence so that they are able to really support their children um but we're not here for the parents to become reliant on us or you know us to be a crutch almost to them it's about how to empower the parents so that ultimately they are the ones that know that they've got the inner resource um and that i would say is the real gift that coaching gives um because you don't come with the answers you believe the other person has them and it's your job as a coach to create the space for that person to kind of self-discover yeah enabling people to have their own agency Mm. yeah exactly um and so the way we kind of train our facilitators to do that is actually a thing i first learned at resurgo which is called live coaching uh which i don't know if you've ever come across that kind of phrase um but it's a really great training tool because it uh, is about giving feedback in the moment while someone's doing something. So as they're delivering, you would uh, say positive comments over the top of them. You might also give a pointer, like um, open that question up, um, you know, leave a little space here. Uh, and the whole idea is to give live feedback so that actually you don't do the thing which is always so annoying right when you deliver something and then at the end someone's like oh if you'd only spoken a little louder uh, or <laughs> if you hadn't moved around so much and you're thinking great well and I can't do anything about that now yeah. um so we use this tool called live coaching on our training so we yeah. role play how to deliver the material and then as coaches uh we give them feedback in the moment and everyone that does our training normally says I was so nervous about doing the live coaching but it was the best thing that the training gave us Um, because it's a safe zone for all the facilitators to get that confidence that they need so that they can then deliver the program in a really effective way Mm -hmm. Um, because what we do in the role play is people We'll have dynamics so we ask someone to be you know that non-stop talking parent or the parent that doesn't say anything or maybe someone that disagrees and then you have to sort of flex your facilitation skills as a coach to know how do I deal with that how do I make sure I'm still creating a very open space but equally I do need to direct this conversation somehow um so yeah life coaching has been a real key to us doing that well that sounds so powerful because often we say to people in our coach training programs when you're in a small group get the person who's with you observing to stop you if they think you're doing the thing that you're trying to not do Mm -hmm. because otherwise the feedback just goes oh yeah you did that again (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly and also we do it so you can also then say the positives over because sometimes it's hard to know was that an open question and so it's really nice to be able to say like oh such a great question and to have that instant confirmation means that then that skill is being really embedded for the person Mm. you know Mm. rather than saying oh the first question you said was really good you know that's not as what what question was that (laughs) exactly (laughs) yeah Yeah. or we might say like when someone's tried something new we just sort of acknowledge like oh did what did you notice about how the group responded quick analysis great let's go back to it and then you keep going nice so there's that nice you're almost persuading me that role plays a good way of training people <laughs> yes <laughs> it is a bit of a marmite but i would say you can persuade everyone that it is yeah get on board with it it's good <laughs> yeah that's amazing so those the people then go out into the into the communities and do their good work yeah exactly um and so as you uh, kind of referred to already one of our key parts of our model as an organization is that we then support that person because we all know like you turn up to some training you have 
all the best will in the world to then act on that training but life gets in the way or it's a bit harder than you thought or it's quite lonely doing it um so actually we have support coaches on team who uh every facilitator that completes our training is assigned a support coach and that person journeys with that facilitator for as long as they run our programs um, and I'd say that is really one of our secret ingredients of being able to have such effective community based provision. Um, because actually, you know, that's someone that you can celebrate the wins with, talk through that session and say, I don't know if, how that actually went. Can I just talk through this dynamic? Um, and then also, when we always face some kind of roadblock, um, mm-hmm. have that person that is there to coach you again you know um you know the title being a support coach is intentional because they're not there as some kind of you know big bad boss that's managing you it's very much we're here in this with you and we're here to help you um with that wow and Hmm. so the way you came to us was that somebody said oh they're looking for icf coaches so why are you look what what is it that made you decide that that was the standard and quality that you wanted in your organization yeah i think um so that that was the route that um going back to the resurgo where i originally found out about coaching they were they kind of a couple of years ago thought actually we'd love to make sure that the coaching we're doing isn't because i think a lot of people throw around the word coaching now it's become a bit of a kind of you know phrase that people use but the there is quite a variety in quality and I've definitely experienced what people would call coaching. And then I'm like, this is not coaching. You're definitely telling me what to do. (laughs) Um, And so they were like, oh, this is a great kind of kite mark almost of like, you know, quality of coaching. And so as an organization, we thought actually this could be a really good process to take our coaches through. Um, and, And I think also any kind of, kind of accreditation you do you also want it to be kind of useful and and upskill you in a way that you're actually going to use Mm. um and I would say having done the ice so I became a PCC coach um a couple of years ago which has then enabled me to be a key mentor for the yeah to do an internal uh ICF journey so we have now um had four people successfully go through the ACC coaching which we've done internally fantastic um, and it has been amazing to, I mean I learn something every time I'm doing the mentoring yeah. you know um but I think it is I mean the ICF approach it, there is quite there's a formula to it you know to get a recording that passes you know you do have to tick a lot of boxes and it can feel a bit rigid um but the essence and I guess the tools you learn from having done that that process I mean they have hugely benefited um our approach to coaching um and I think we've just realized actually that it is a really helpful measure I mean we're not stuck to it so I think if someone did come to work for us that had an equivalent (laughs) we would totally appreciate that you know um but ICF has just been a route that has worked for us and um does enable us to feel really confident that the level of support that is being offered by our coaches is all the same level because everyone's gone through a similar process of of development there um so yeah it's it's been a great learning we've been really only on the pathway with it for the last kind of two years Mm. um but it's definitely created a really strong foundation um in everyone's skill set it's so refreshing to hear you tell that story and explain that so clearly because often we get approached by organizations who are saying we want to have a coaching culture and we say well actually what you want to do is you want to make yourselves reliant on us for the shortest amount of time possible Mm. (laughs) and and you want to get yourself a pcc coach internally Mm. Because they can do exactly what we can do, and then you don't need us anymore. So, what a beautiful example! Yeah, that is. Yeah, I think. Well, exactly. That's our approach to so much, really. I guess at Kids Matter is we're like, you know, we really want to ensure that we are internally best equipped as we can be um, to to be able to support our team, um, and then from that, actually support those who are out, you know, 
actually here yeah. <laughs> uh, existing to to kind of support um so yeah it's been good i mean it's like really sharpens your ability to listen and uh <laughs> equips you with some amazing questions uh you know um i feel very privileged to be able to like gone through it and um get to use those skills on a daily basis so it's great yeah so it's all the way through your dna it is yeah it's how we run our meetings um it's how we manage our teams it's how we train any kind of training we run is completely coaching based it's how our program is designed um and what's exciting actually i feel like it's definitely the first organization where it's like from the ops team <laughs> all the way down to the support coaches which is in their name <laughs> but coaching is a is is a thing everyone is given training um you know because we want it to we do want it to be part of the dna it is one of our what we call our culture tools oh. um and it's sort of like i guess if we, if i was going to describe it in a snapshot we 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 say coaching is about being curious it's about raising awareness and activating responsibility nice um so it's so that when you're having a discussion you're approaching it not like oh i have the solution for your problem but actually let me just ask a question here find out some more and ideally really the other person is likely to come to the solution so that they're not reliant on their manager or their teammate to be that you know just like you were saying you don't want people to be reliant on on 3d coaching no. we don't want people to be reliant you know i don't want the people i manage to be like only katie has the answers <laughs> you know it's <laughs> like i need you to fly without me and i believe that's possible so let's ensure you have what's needed for that to happen wow so you've worked in other organizations <laughs> and i'm without naming any i think my question to you is What's the difference in how it feels to work in an organization that is embedding a coaching culture so deeply? Um, yeah, I think there's a real common language and common expectation. Um, so another thing we have quite strongly here is quite strong feedback culture. Uh, so we stumbled upon the book Radical Candor. Yes. I don't know if I can Scott. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And that's, again, is another real kind of focus for us so that a whole idea of caring personally and challenging directly and not creating what can happen quite a bit in some organization this ruinous empathy approach where you just don't really say what's wrong and pretend yeah. it's all fine but as we all know you know it's like a volcano about to explode it will come out somewhere you know mm -hmm. and I think we try really hard you know we're not perfect by any means and there are definitely you know <laughs> I'm sure days and moments where we could be you know do the radical candor better but I think when you add coaching to that radical candor approach it's such an amazing mix and really allows there to be a place where people feel safe to be able to you know really name what's um going on for them or the problem that they're facing or maybe the thing that they disagree with and the hope is that they then would feel like that is held in a curious way you know that the other person won't come back at them completely disagreeing and saying oh I'm curious how how that made you feel that way or okay well could you explain a little bit more about you know what's challenging about how we communicated that message or that so the hope is that from the very lowest level to the top there's that ability to give feedback ability to have those conversations um and I think that is you know it's, it's hard to, to manage that and you know we have definitely got it wrong in the past and we keep <laughs> learning but I think you know that's also a key part of it like being in a growth mindset um being able to hold up your hands and say yeah do you know what we really messed up there um and we'd love to hear from you guys and work out why and hopefully we'll be stronger and better for having got through that turbulent time um where i feel like i've worked, been in workplaces you know where they say they want to hear your view but 
quite clearly they don't because it gets <laughs> you know put in a cupboard or ignored or um you know uh yeah or you're in a very fixed mindset place you know you're like we all know this isn't working but no one's willing to change it so we're gonna stick with this awkward process you know where you know I'd say we are sometimes to our detriment very flexible and adaptable so um (laughs) that that's exciting for me I that's Mm -hmm. kind of the environments I thrive in and I'd say those that work for us do as well because they are so willing to share the things, you know, share new ideas and take a risk um, with that. So So you're not expecting your end users, your your families Mm. to do anything that you're not expecting your staff to do? 100% exactly. Like, um, you know... that that whole phrase like the wisdom's in the room well if we truly believe that at the foundational level of us delivering our programs then I can't run a meeting and just project my ideas and don't take leave space for anyone else's you know Mm -hmm. we want to create a collaborative workplace that really enables you know that phrase to be true at every level um and yeah I mean you're spot on I feel like you know the approach of how we do our you know team meeting is the same approach we'd want a facilitator to run the program and the same approach we'd want a parent to have in their families you know we you know a lot of some of the material is all about strength how to strengthen that parent child relationship and equip parents with that ability to ask that curious question so that they can find out more from their child we have this thing called conversation starters and parents feel like it's a real gift you know because you so many times right you talk to a kid and it's you know how was your day fine what did you do today (laughs) nothing (laughs) you know and so it's like how about you know as you don't always have the creative space in your mind to come up with a more different question you know so we just apply the coaching approach to some child related conversation starters and see what happens you know like um so yeah for sure it's 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 um in everything we do this whole coaching kind of approach to stuff i love that it connects back to a a podcast from last week or the week before with um timothy clark who wrote the four stages of psychological safety Mm. and he talks about the coach having the first mover obligation to be vulnerable Mm. and you've just described that at every level (laughs) yeah at every level people in your organization have the first mover obligation to be vulnerable yeah yeah definitely and actually um how we train our facilitators is so um primarily our facilitators are parents themselves so that they can share vulnerably so that you break those walls down so there isn't like I'm the expert here and you're all here to listen to me it's more like this morning I had an absolute nightmare with my kids and (laughs) you know everything went wrong you know and so from that place everyone else feel you can almost feel the relief in the body language you know Mm -hmm. and then it's like oh okay this isn't somewhere where I have to put a pretense on or I can actually let that mask down or I can actually say what's what's you know I'm struggling with um and yeah like that is the foundation of how we have our parenting programs run and and that is that exactly how you know we want our team meetings to be run and how we want as managers to support our our team members um you know if I'm not willing to say you know the struggles that I have how can I expect someone else to tell me theirs you know that doesn't feel like a very fair um you know uh, relationship uh, approach so what difference is this making in your communities and the communities where your people are yeah a, a, a huge difference and what's so exciting about our work actually is that you know it's a community-based provision so our facilitators are just you know your average parent in that community running this program but because it is evidence-informed um, and 
because of our psychology kind of foundations, we do these formalized evaluations. So a parent fills in a pre, a post, and a three month later evaluation form, and they are standardized um, evaluations. So they would be used in, in like clinical settings. And so what that data is showing us is two main things that we track uh, the kind of parent's confidence. Um, and the parents' well-being, um, because if you can change those two things, they're like the beginning dominoes, you know. Then that, it, you know, if a parent is feeling very confident and competent in their parenting skills, and that their tank is full, they're going to be able to handle any challenges that their child might be facing, or might get thrown at them as a family, because majority of our families, you know, are, are dealing with um, the impact of poverty, which is extremely challenging. Mm. Um, and so what else? data is showing us um is that our parents um have an an improvement so they the level of their confidence from session one improves in session six and then what's so exciting is that it stays improved three months later wow which is you know an amazing thing and same with our well-being so on average our parents come in below national average for well-being after the six sessions, they are above national average. And then again, what is exciting is that three months later, they stay above national average. And what's exciting about that is that obviously when you're meeting weekly, you expect people to feel a sense of their well-being going up if you're you know, doing things right. We, we have tea and cake and food and, you know, um, in the environment. But for that to maintain three months later when they perhaps haven't been, you know, they haven't been meeting weekly and they're not in that group setting all the time shows that significant change has made in that parent's well-being. Um, clearly, the tools, the confidence that they have got has really embedded because they are still showing a real improvement. Um, and that's really exciting to think that a provision run you know, in the community by non clinicians is having this incredible impact. Um, and then what the research then shows you, you know, if, if that is happening, then the chances for that child to thrive in life and then later in life, and then when they become parents, mm -hmm. you know, you're, we're looking for generational change. That's, you know, our real hope um, for things. And yeah, everything is showing that that is going to happen for any parent that kind of comes to our programs so I love the three month thing yes <laughs> the other thing is just lovely isn't it you know you really want people at the end of six sessions to go oh, it was lovely it was great oh. but the impact is extraordinary yeah it really is um and you just you know and in a way like you look at the things and you just you know and facilitators you know it's quite powerful for them because they just think well I was just bringing myself and hosting a group and going through some material you know it almost in the moment it doesn't feel like as profound as then you're like but this is what the data is showing you know like it's incredible and it's not even like with one parent you know we have the data for hundreds of parents showing this improvement you know um so yeah it's it's really amazing um wow. and it really motivates us to kind of you know get more places in the uk you know our our vision would be for you know every community in the uk to be able to run a kids matter or we also have a babies matter program so that's so kids matter is for parents of two to ten year olds and then babies matter is the you know zero to one kind of zone um wow. so yeah so how many families have you impacted so far yeah, UK. so we have impacted over 2,000 um, parents, which equates to over 4,600 children um, in this kind of seven and a half years that we've um, been running. That's amazing. And are you doing longitudinal research or is that a step too oh. far? That is, well, it is on the horizon for us. Yeah. Wow. So we are in the process of, um, yeah, what we would love is to start off with some year data yeah. um, and then go go from there, really. Um, and yeah, we'd also love to, so we have a lot of 
parent-based impact data um Mm -hmm. because that's obviously who we are initially supporting but the child is actually obviously the end kind of user of this uh so we're also working on on how to gather that as well some hard data around the child it's it's very challenging because we are a community-based program and um but you know i think that would be amazing if we're able to do that so we're looking at different avenues to do that possibly partner with a university um to be able to help us with that um but yeah i mean that that's the dream really find out where parents are a year later two years later you know three years later particularly now that we've been running for you know over seven years we've and some of our we have partners that have been with us for seven years so we can you know they're still in that's the beauty of partnering with something like you know an organization like a church is that the church is going nowhere so we are still connected we still have some facilitators that have been there for that long and so actually and and actually what's even more amazing is some of those parents who did the early programs have come back through and are now facilitators oh wow and that really you know that because again we're, we're wanting this to be a space where again there's self-sufficiency in that you know and actually mm-hmm. the best people to run these are the very people who came for the help you know because mm-hmm. there's that you know ability to really get to give back to your community be able to um yeah build build so much more strength in the relationships there Amazing. so if people want to talk to you about what you do or find out more about how they can support you uh what how do they do that and what are you not looking for um yes yeah, so you can email us at info at kidsmatter.co.uk go to our website um kidsmatter.co.uk uh, have a you know have a look at us find out some more um i guess i mean what do we want? I mean, we have opportunities for people to be able to volunteer. So if they if they do get in co- contact, we have a whole list of, of ways that could be from, you know, we're a charity, so we need money. <laughs> so <laughs> any if, if this has sparked a kind of passion for people for our vision, then, uh, you know, any any kind of donations or or wanting to be a part of the wider family, um, because we call them family champions, um, the ability to host events um uh with that then then do you know get in contact in terms of any kind of if anyone this sparked anyone to want to join us <laughs> uh we will have a few roles coming out you know like all things we're sort of we're growing and also you know team will always move on at points so do check out our website for the latest vacancies um with that but you know if this has really sparked a passion for us, then feel free to connect and, and we'll try our best to kind of get in contact and, and continue a conversation. So thank you, Katie, for coming to the Coaching Inn. It's been an absolute delight to have you here and to find out so many wonderful things about the work of Kids Matters. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, do subscribe or follow and share this episode if you think there's someone else who should be listening to it. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we'd love you to share the podcast with a friend or leave a comment on social media. And if you'd like to become a regular at The Coaching Inn, you can subscribe on Podbean and all major podcast channels. We look forward to welcoming you next time. You've been listening to The Coaching Inn, 3D Coaching's virtual pub. For more information, check out 3dcoaching.com.